Welcome to Zena Jade Makes on Twitch. I'm uh, going to be uploaded to YouTube a little later. So we've been working on holiday cards. Uh, so far we've made about 67 cards total. You can see some of them on my Instagram at instagram.com slash Zenith Jade. Uh, yeah, so that's a lot of cards. We've got about 30 or so left to no. 30, 30 or 40 left to go. Uh, so we've been working on these really kick butt rainbow trees for these cards. Um, so we're going to finish those up today. We've got five more cards to put rainbow trees on. See these five cards. And then. We'll start putting the accents on them and finish stamping them and stuff. So it should be good. All right, so we've got our little holiday tree stamp. I'll flip that over. I got some paper towel ready to clean it using stays on. So one thing you should note that I found out uh, Last time I was working on holiday cards is that this stuff will remove the finish from a table. So I would make sure to put like double up your paper towels and if they start getting wet through change your paper towels out. So it's not a big deal because these are my crafting tables but if you were going to do this on a nice wooden kitchen table you wouldn't want to have that happen. So my crafting tables can take a beating though. Alright, well why don't we start by coloring up the stamp. I'm using just generic brush pens. Starting with the red, going to do the heart in red. Just because that's the start of a rainbow. Kind of works out that way though. I'm going to do orange. I think we may need a different green because I've been I've been using these for rainbow cards for quite a while and the green may be getting a little might be running out of ink luckily we have a whole bunch of them this is the only two green I have left we'll use this one put that one back in there what on earth? Maybe we won't use that one. We'll just try this one. Oh, I guess I'm wrong. I like being wrong when it comes to my brush pens running out. Let's see here. Make sure that's completely covered. Long green, blue. The blue for sure is not running out. It's got nice color coverage. Purple. Oh, my cat's trying to crawl up my leg. I don't know, kitty. That would be picky. He desperately wants up on this chair behind me. I can't have him up there behind me when I'm working. I might fall off the chair. Oh, hi, buddy. Okay, so that's inked up for the first time. I'm going to take this blank card that I've already adhered the paper to. I'm going to blow on the stamp to reactivate the ink because I don't know if you can see it's kind of dried. No? And if you blow on it, it re-moisturizes it. I'm going to stamp it real quick. Make sure to get all the corners. 
can very gently rock it back and forth if you want to. Oh yeah, see that turned out pretty good. Ta -da. Put it in the finished trees pile. We got about 15 of those done so far, so I'll make 16. And so now we're just going to color these over again. Do red first. And orange. Yellow. Luckily we only have five cards left to do, so I think the green will probably last that long. Which is good. I don't know what's up with this brush pen. So last week I had some problems with the sound, I apologize. Trying to get the hang of this whole Twitch thing and using the streaming software, so I do apologize for that, but so if you were here last week you may have heard only music or nothing at all. Well, that's okay. It's 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 fun to learn new things. So get the hang of this stuff. Okay. Grab another blank card. So yeah, we used uh, rubber cement to adhere the paper to the, the cards. That is my preferred method of paper adhesive for cards. See that one turned out pretty good too. Nice solid impression. So we'll just keep doing this. Coloring the stamp. Go orange. So that that's one thing I really love about brush pens is the ability to, to put color where you exactly where you want it. So I think they're kind of underrated. You have more control with blending colors too. I uh, I have a ton of art supplies, and one of the few things I didn't have was a a brayer. It's a little rolly rolly do deal. Can you look it up on Google if you're wondering what it looks like? I'll grab it in a second, but they're they're really neat uh, tools, and I think I want to one of these days run a brayer over my little gel pad for the brayer and with some paint and just stamp directly from the paint like put my stamp on the paint and with some nice gradients and see how that turns out because I think that'll be fun I might work with alcohol inks too I'm just not sure so Last time we used a brayer was when I did line of cuts in high school, and that has been a long time ago. So we'll just have to see how it all turns out. There we go. That 
one's not too bad either. Yep. Just getting it all, getting these done. So we have two more left to do. Very peaceful working on cards, I think. Very relaxing. So, especially once you get into A good flow. Doing purple now. It's the second to last card we need to do. We'll do pink. So yeah, it was kind of funny. I was going to give away one of these rainbow cards last week, but I don't think anybody could hear me. So we'll have to do that again sometime soon. Try that out. See if we can't get a rainbow card sent off to somebody. There we go. Make sure those corners are nice and there we go. Well, that's not bad. Actually, that's pretty good. It's pretty. I have an obsession with rainbows, so I have to make a rainbow snowflake card, too, here pretty soon. I have the... I finished a rainbow snowflake. I just don't know what I did with it right off the top of my head. There are pictures of my studio up on the up on Instagram too, just like this corner. So, but it's actually a whole room. Just didn't really know how to photograph it all that well doing the whole thing, so and it's messy. There are supplies everywhere. <laughs> I try to keep things semi-organized, but it may or may not work. So we're working on our last card here. For the rainbow tree. Do our last little pink trunk. this lovely little tree. There we go. There we go. Oh, yep. 
that's pretty good. Last one. So, there should be 20 of these bad boys finished now. So I'm going to wash this off with a stamp cleaner. Just get it good and clean. I really love this stamp. I've used it a lot in Christmas cards. Just so happy. It's got a little heart instead of a little star. Yep, that's good. Put that over here. Now we have to choose our sentiment to put in there. Just grabbing some more stamps. So we have Happy Holidays. Oh, I should probably. Happy Holidays. <clears throat> Making Spirits Merry and Bright. Jingle all the way. There. And we have a Merry Christmas and tis the season to be jolly. So, kind of thinking Happy Holidays and the rainbow cards might be nice. It's got some nice snowflakes on there. Or maybe making spirits merry and bright. I don't know, all these sentiments are really nice. They came in a pack of five. So. Let's see now. I already stamped out 20 snowflakes to put on the fronts of the cards. Um, and they're in pink. So I think what we will do is pink, put pink snowflakes here and here. And maybe one down here. And do this. Not this. But do this in a nice green color. So, just so it stands out a little bit better. So, this is Cottage Ivy Memento Ink Pad. Two drop because of the shape. See? So. And as per usual, we just run the ink pad right along the top. You don't really need to press down unless your ink pad's running out of ink and mine aren't. So just push that down real good. See, there you go. Making spirits merry and bright. And a nice green color, so. Run that across. Make sure I'm not doing this upside down. Yep. So when you're just using an ink pad in a single color, it goes considerably faster than when you're using brush pens. So with like multiple colors on them. So if you want to make cards in a hurry, just use a single color. Or you can use an ink pad that has multiple colors on it, but uh, the reason I prefer brush pens over those is because it's hard to get this stamp, any stamp really, on the ink pad the same time every time. So you might blend the colors together a bit. So, single color ink pads are sometimes the way to go. But mostly I just wanted to do this in a solid color for this card because it'll stand out really well against the rainbow. Here we are.
So I apologize if I sound slightly congested. It's because I am. I completely forgot to take my allergy meds today. And as I joke with my doctor, I'm like allergic to everything. <laughs> so if I sound a little funny, that's why. You might also hear me sniffling a little bit. So I apologize. I don't mean to be all snuffly. Oop, that one was a little light impression. I must not have pushed that one down hard enough. Still looks okay, it's just not as dark as the other ones. Here, give me one moment, please. All right, I am back. I had a wee bit of company for just a moment. There we go. Yeah, those are those are nice. I think they're turning out pretty well. Just brush that across. So if you wanted to be really precise, you could use a ruler as you were laying this out. Um, I like the fact that they're all slightly different. I feel it makes them unique. So I'm getting a really neat contraption though that will help me be more precise like with uh, the clear stamps. It's a uh, it's going to be coming on Monday, I think. So that's going to be exciting. I'll share more about that with you then. Oop, that's Allie C. She's making noise. She's very good at making noise. But she really wants us pets. Fortunately, my hands are a wee bit busy right now working on cards, so. She'll get pets after we get done. Oh, that came out dark on the side. Too much ink. That one was better. There. One left to do. Now we'll start in on the snowflakes on the inside of the cards. 
As you can see, this is going pretty fast. We just did 20 cards in not a whole lot of time. Granted, I had some of these rainbow trees done already, but this Making Spirits Merry and Bright stamping went awfully quick. So now we're going to clean this one. The stamp cleaner. Excuse me. There we go. Get that all clean. Now it's just wet for a while. And there are about two little stamps. So these will be the snowflakes for the inside of here. I don't know if you can see on, on these all that well, but I did a dark pink stamp here and a light pink stamp here. Oh, I thought I was going to sneeze. So, do you see that light pink? Maybe a little? So we're going to use the dark pink. It's actually lilac posies, so it's like a violet. Brush that across. Put that there. We'll do this again. Put that there. So yep, that's how it's gonna look when it, they're done. So those just doubling these two up and then this one all on its own. And I think that looks pretty nice. So, just takes a little bit more time because we're laying down three impressions instead of the one. And it's pretty easy to get a good impression with just a little, just a little tap after you inked it up with these smaller stamps. You guys can't really see what I'm doing. I'll have to move everything over. Move this stuff out of the way. So we got done with the rainbows. Put those back in there. Grab the little snowflake. See? Just do do do. I don't know if you can actually hear that or not, but that is Odie barking in the background. OD stands for Ordinary Dog, instead of, say, Garfield and OD. My nephew named him when he was little, and he just thought that was really a good name, and it stuck, so... making progress. I think we've gotten six done so far. And then we'll have to do the fronts. So, and the backs. We'll put homemade by on the backs. Probably in this pink again. There we are. Make sure this is somewhat under the camera so you guys can see what I'm doing. 
least a little bit. That one's all done. So believe it or not, I know I've been streaming cards since like Halloween, but I also make a ton of jewelry and that's actually my main, the main thing I do is making jewelry. So, but these have got to get done. So before the holidays, of course. I'm sending some of them overseas and I want them to get there before Christmas, so. If at all possible. So now if I wanted to, I could make these snowflakes go over the edge a little. So it'd just be like a little corner snowflake. I just put a paper towel under it so it wouldn't stamp directly on my table, but then I could just get the corner of the stamp on there. That might look cool too, but There. See, and I have room to write a little note here. So, just a little note. I actually got an order for some custom cards, which I was going to work on today, and I forgot some of the stuff for them. I had to print out a poem to put on this top flap right here. And I did that, but I forgot them. <laughs> so that's the way it goes, I guess. There. Have another one finished. I think we've only got like four left to go. We're making great progress. So, yeah, if you wanted to make something like this at home, you're going to need rubber cement and an assortment of stamps, uh, some white cardstock, which is always handy, uh, scissors or a paper cutter. Um, let's see what else you're going to need ink. So, just a small variety of supplies. Oops, sorry. I'm rattling the camera. There we go. That last one was a little off. The snowflakes were almost right next to each other. I'll show you that one again. I mean, they were still not exactly across from each other, but a little too close for how I like to do these. But it's okay, it makes them unique. We have two left. Yep, I'm right. Just doing some simple crafting. So a lot of times you can find neat scrapbooking or card making supplies 
at garage sales. Uh, you can get them on sale a, most of the time at uh, like Michael's or Hobby Lobby or Joann's. They have these the stuff on sale a lot. Um, oh, those are going to fall. So I think we're going to do the homemade buy on the backs now. Get that done up real quick. There we go. So you'll notice I stamped the paper towel with the top of these. I don't know if you can see me doing that, but stamp it just gets the excess ink off my little stamp cleaner. It doesn't won't work the greatest if there's still a lot of ink on there. There we go. Get the stamp off the edge or the ink off the edges of my stamp. Yeah, that's pretty good. So the stamp it's pretty cute. It's homemade by, it's got a little gingerbread man on it. It was designed in 1999 by Westwater Enterprises. So I don't even know if they're still in business or not, but it's pretty cute. So we'll just take this pink. Do this on the backs, all of these. Oh no! I cut off the edge of my gingerbread man. I'm gonna move these over here. Ah! Cards everywhere. There we go. Make sure that's good and inked up this time. Stamp that down. Oh, that's a much better impression. Most of the time, if you ink up your stamps well and they don't impress right, it's user error. I'm just going to make sure you press down on the whole stamp. So that's what that first impression was. Just a mistake. There. And then I'll sign each of these two with my name in the year. So yeah, oh, I was going to say, if you want a holiday card, you can go to my Patreon and um, do the $5 tier. That includes shipping worldwide and domestic. You can get a card sent to you. It's uh, Xena Jade on Patreon. I also have a plushie tier. Um, if you wanted a custom art doll slash plushie made, there are some pictures on Patreon of those. I have sold all my plushies, so I don't have one to show you. I went through, uh, kind of got burnt out making plushies for a while because I made like 20 of them and 20 plus of them in a month, I think. And that was too many. So... 
I can't really see what I'm doing down here. We'll fix that. Keep moving everything closer to me. Sorry about that, guys. Still getting used to working with the camera and what's on screen, so. a little bit of stamp cleaner. I just got off the desk. Yeah, you can see right here. So you see this little bronze sponge? That's just rubber cement. It rubs right off. Probably just dust from my tables. But yeah, see that just rubs right off. I cleaned my tables not too long ago, but with inking and stamping and rubber cementing and <laughs> all that stuff on my table, I think it could can get dirty awfully quick. I should probably go through and use some cleaner on my table again. So I hope the video isn't dropping too often. It's a work in progress getting the internet working the way it's supposed to. I couldn't even do this at home, I don't think. Our internet speed is not fast enough, so it's nice that I can do it here in my studio at least semi-well. Almost done with these two. There we go. Almost done. I think we have one left after this one. Oh yeah, I was also going to add, if you wanted custom jewelry made, uh, you can email me at zenagcreates at gmail.com. Uh, questions can be directed there as well. Uh, or custom cards, or plushies, or cat toys. If I have time today, I'm going to make some cat toys on air. So that, that should be fun. Tis the season. I make usually make them about once a year. And that's around the holidays to give away to friends and family who have kitties. I did get an interesting request, request the other day. Um, someone asked for a toy for their rats, and I guess some cat toys work really well as rat toys, too, so the more you know. So that's pretty neat. So I did get her toy done for the little rattos and the 
let's see. So now we're going to take the big snowflake stamp and stamp the envelopes. And this should go by pretty fast. I'm going to do it in the same pink. Now we've done all this other stuff in. It requires a little bit more thinking of layout though. Here we go. I like them at least semi-centered in between the in the flat corner here, so thanks for bearing with me. If the internet's not working the greatest. I will be uploading this the whole video to YouTube without any of the frame rate drops and stuff. That'll be going under Zenith Jade. Almost everything's Zenith Jade. My website is zenithjadecreations.com. This is my face Facebook page is under Zenith Jade Creations. So and then my deviant art is completely different. I haven't changed it over yet. I've had it for a long time. That's Anjiko. You can do a exclamation point DA and get the URL for that, the web address. So all sorts of neat pictures of jewelry and cats and uh, travels. Got some ink on my finger. <laughs> Hazards of stamping. Hazards of stamping. There, oh, see? Nice snowflake impression there. So we're making tracks through these cards today, guys. I'll probably have time to make some cat toys. That would be great. Yeah, so I have like a huge pile of felt. Some people have fabric, I have felt. And I use that for the cat toys. I'm going to clean up that ink real quick. There we go. I'll show you all the different patterns of felt I have in a second. And I don't even have them all cut yet, so... I have more patterns that I'll even show you, but I use the felt to make the art dolls and the cat toys. The envelope got a little bent. I wonder what happened. So yeah, I bought the coolest seals, and I'm not going to be using them on these cards. I might try to find a cool wax seal and put that right here on these cards, but we'll see. i got to make sure it'll mail okay. I have a little 
wax pour thingy and more craft supplies, right? Little wax pour thingy and some wax, some little wax cubes. So I need the metal stamp to stamp an impression in it. I could just use like a little blob, but it would be so much cooler if I had something to impress in it. And I don't want to melt my rubber stamps. So I'm trying to impress in hot wax. <laughs> I think that would be a bad idea. Oh, that one's nice. Almost done with these. I suppose I could just do a wax blob. I don't know, we'll see. I'll have to show you how to do that on camera because I believe all you have to do is hold the little cup with it, it's a little cup with a handle and you put some wax cubes in there. You melt it hold the little cup over a candle flame melts the wax and then you pour the wax on the card and then you can stamp an impression in it once it cools a little but i haven't done that in a really long time so so many crafts so little time Now let's get the cards here. I'm going to grab some three dimensional cubes. So these will make the snowflakes pop up a little. Not a huge amount, just a little. It ought to be cute. Just want one of these. These are very sticky. Just put it on the. Now I have been centering these in the corner just because I like how it looks. You can, of course, do the center too if you want to. And if you wanted to get really fancy, you could do like a little strip of ribbon or vellum underneath. Here, I'll show you this a little bit. Our ribbon or vellum underneath right here. And then you could put this right in the middle. That might look pretty sweet. Actually, I think that would look really sweet. But I'm just doing mine in the corners. Do that like that. There we go. I don't think that looks too bad either. Especially since when you open it up, it's kind of balanced by the snowflake in the corner. So. Grab some sticky stuff. There we go. I don't have very long nails. It's because I make jewelry. The wire and stuff I play with usually just chips my nails right off. So I keep them short to keep them from getting ruined. 
the same reason I don't wear nail polish all that often. I think it's very pretty though. There. See? I should. Yep, there, that's a little better. And you open it up. So there are a bunch of different techniques you can use with cards. And like designs are endless. I'll have to see if I can't find some of my old card designs for you guys so you can. If I find them, I'll upload them to Instagram for you. So you can see some of my old older card designs because I've used uh eyelets on cards before i have a little eyelet set that um the tool set to set eyelets in paper i think that was pretty popular back in the 90s or early 2000s i'm just getting the sticky loose sticky squares so I was using um, dots, but I ran out of the little round ones, so that's, I had some of the square ones, so that's why we just transitioned to the square ones. They about work the same. And just center it as best you can in the corner. You can see mine is probably about a quarter of an inch from either side. See? I just eyeball it. You can, other people probably use rulers. And you can certainly do that too. I think, uh, A ruler might be handy for doing this if you don't think you can eyeball it very good, very well. So, we're going to have a stack of 20 finished cards when we're done with these. Oh, I think I mentioned this before. It's worth mentioning again. Um, I'll have another raffle coming up to win one of these cards for free. I can either send it to you or somebody else or I can send it to you blank and you can gift it to somebody else. I have oh man <laughs> this backing doesn't want to come off. It's too sticky. Let's see? It's just refusing to I think I've tried every corner. Oh, there we go. The dots are a little bit easier to get the stuff off of them. The backing off. These are very sticky. So these are nearly done. I just got to sign the backs with my name and the date after we get the, oh man. As you can see I'm having problems getting this backing off again. Tearing all the sticky off because it's sticking to my fingers. There 
There we go. I think it's still sticky enough. We'll find out. No, that is not sticky enough. So I'm taking some 3M Scotch permanent double-sided tape. I'm just going to take a little square of it. Stick it to the back of the sticky. See? Quick fix. That way I still get my three-dimensional look and it still works. Oh, see, it kind of comes off the page there. We'll keep this here as a backup. I think I'm going to try to take It's hard for me to see when it's too far away from me, so. And these are just not coming off real good. No. I should probably note that these are pretty old too. So it's no surprise that they're not behaving as they should. There we go. Some of my art supplies are old. I had a really cute Ranger uh, glue pad and that was too old to use, I think. Ranger glue pad. I got uh, a newer one though that I totally forgot about. Um, by recollections, that's I believe Michael's brand. And it even came with a refill for this glue pad, so. Yep, so that's good. Let's see here. Watching me struggle with these silly square adhesives. At least they haven't resorted to swearing yet. That's that's a good sign. Almost done with these, I think. We've got six left to go, including this one. Let's see if we can get all these square adhesives to work right. Three dimensional square adhesives. So believe it or not, I think I bought these in a dollar store in Michigan. There's a lot of cool stuff in dollar stores out there. Like some wickedly cool craft supplies. They had like cotton yarn too and so you can make like cool washcloths and 
That was neat. See if we can get my nail underneath these corners. Go. There we go. Yep, so about a quarter of an inch away from the edges, I thought looked the best for these particular cards. But you can put them in the center too, or you can add ribbon or vellum or whatever your heart desires, pretty much. Yarn, yarn works too. I might show you how that'll look in a second. Because you can run yarn like right across this top. It looks really neat. You can make like card sized clothespins. And you can put those like if you wanted to, you could like run yarn or a little piece of twine and just clothespin this on. And that would look pretty cute too. So. I think that would be adorable. So I am actually in western Wisconsin. Very close to the Mississippi. One left. And it's absolutely beautiful here. You get all the seasons. The colors are spectacular. I don't think I, I don't know if I got any really great autumn shots this year. But I have gotten some beautiful sunsets along the river road. Uh, and uh, which goes right next to the Mississippi. And then it's just some glorious sunsets. And then I've also gotten some pictures of the countryside near where I live. So see, we got all these done. That's so good. Now we just got to sign the backs. Might as well do that real quick. So we have this many squares left. Eight squares. That's not too bad. It's better than running out in the middle. So we're going to use, oh, what color should we use? I'll probably use this pretty blue. These are Pentel hybrids. They're dual metallic. And they, uh, this one is blue on white and metallic green on a darker color. So it would be like navy blues, blacks, uh, darker purples probably. It would show up as metallic green. So these are really cool and kind of versatile. I got them off of Amazon. Can I see the sparkle? Oh, and they're sparkly too. I don't know if you can see that real well, but there we are. There we are. Yeah, if you'd like one of these, you can just head to my Patreon and get one, or you can wait for the giveaway. Hopefully we'll have some people in chat who will be willing to enter the raffle for one. Free O-Charge. My treat. So, we'll do that next week sometime, I think. Maybe, maybe we should do it on Black Friday. That would be hilarious. Get something for free on Black Friday. I think
think that's a good idea. So, I do, I do. I've got... You guys have any big Thanksgiving plans? Tricky day plans? No? Yes? Maybe? We're going to be heading to my grandma's. That's my big one. So, I'm awfully excited to see her. I have... I have her Christmas presents already and I may take them with. So... We've been... Almost every year we've been snowed out. I'm going to see Christmas with my grandma, so I may just take her Christmas presents to the Thanksgiving thing. And these write really nice too. I highly recommend them. They're super pretty and they write super nice. Super sparkle. All the sparkle. Knocking over my tape again. <laughs> it done got in the way. There. There we have it. Twenty more cards, all finished. Got a little bit of sparkle on my fingers. Oh man, I'm so glad these are done though. So that means I had 67 cards finished and now 87 cards finished. So that's a good good amount. These are all done. No snowflakes. So 87 cards. That's pretty cool. We gotta make I gotta make some to give away to you guys. So that's got to be taken into consideration and I need to make 103 for my list so I'm excited I love sending out holiday cards it's I didn't do it last year I was just too busy and I felt bad <laughs> I I, I, uh, I bought cards last year and I didn't send them out to like my whole list so I'm like, nope, not this year. This year I'm going to make sure all the addresses are right and I'm going to mail them out to everybody. So, yep. So that's exciting. I'll get these out of the way. I'm going to grab some cat toy makings, I think. Yeah, we'll make some cat toys. So those are fun and easy to make. So I will be right back. You enjoy a little intermission and yeah, I'll be back.
Hey guys, I'm back. I just needed to get my cat toy making goodies stuff out and clean off my table a little because uh, it was covered in stamping supplies. It's still kind of covered in stamping supplies, but details and jewelry. But yeah, so we're going to make cat toys. So as you can see, I have a bunch of different colors and patterns of felt um, that I'm going to make into cat toys. So I'm going to take the, these top two. As you can see, I cut them out into circles. I call these kitty comets. Um, so I'm going to start by doing a little surgeon's knot on the end here. Just go down, 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 down. Take my thread. Ah, it's getting away from me. I normally do this a little closer to my body. I think that's why I'm having problems. I'm trying to at least keep it a little on screen for you guys. I don't know if I'll do that again. I may just do the knots closer to me. So we're going to do the blanket stitch all the way around, um, except when we do a slip stitch. So just go in and through. So like all cat toys, your cat should be supervised when they're playing with these. I am going to be printing up little warning labels for cat toys saying that they should be supervised and playing with these. Um, I've never had any problems that I'm aware of. Cats usually just lick these to death, so as they're full of organic catnip. So and if you're worried about like these dyes and stuff, I can get like plain felt. But yeah, it only typically takes me like 15 to 20 minutes to whip one of these up. So after I make one cat toy, I'll probably be done for tonight. But my elbows and the feathers. So yeah, I accent these with feathers and with yarn. Um, and cats just go wild over them. I think I mentioned before that one of my a new friend asked one for her rats. Because I guess cat toys and rat toys are very similar, if not exactly the same. And so, so I did make her one. I'll have to take a picture of it. Oh, wait, I did take a picture of it. I'll throw it up on Instagram after I get done. So you can see my Instagram at Stina Jade. Or, yeah, it's Stina Jade on Instagram. So. As you can see, we've already made it this far. Just make sure to go through. One of these days, I meant to do a tutorial like a week or two ago on the card making stuff, and it just didn't materialize. <laughs> I believe it was the last time I tried to do a. Sh uh, a stream and I was having so many sound problems so I think all you could hear was music when I was trying to tell you trying to tell people how to make cards so so I'm not sure what's been going on with my music player but I can t see that I'm not listening it to listening to it again tonight because I'm afraid it'll just that's all you'll be able to hear not that music isn't wonderful, but I'm trying to give you tips and tricks and making cards. <laughs> it's hard to do when you can't hear me. So, yeah, felt is pretty affordable. Even this cool pattern stuff is pretty affordable. 
so I think it costs about a dollar for an eight by ten sheet. About a dollar. And you can get quite a few cat toys out of that. Hopefully I have enough thread to do this all the way around. So now I'm gonna plunk that right in my thread. I'm gonna grab a feather. And you can use any color feather you want. But cats really like feathers. <laughs> and if you're worried about the dye in these, you can use white feathers or you can get some natural feathers. But like I said before, I've never had a problem with cats getting sick on these toys, so. Ever. <clears throat> they just play with them and love them to their heart's content, so. Now we're going to do a, I believe it's a slip stitch. We're going to just go in and out. Go in and out. I'm just securing the, the feather and the yarn in place. Hopefully without sticking myself. So I'm using fine little stitches and get as much as of this yarn and the feather in there as possible. Now that's okay, it's not perfect, but it's okay. That feather will probably come out pretty quick. Usually I try getting the heart of the feather and the cut up in the thread, but this one it didn't happen because it's awfully narrow. Now we just go back to doing the blanket stitch again. So my grandma actually taught me how to do the stitch when I was in like first or second grade, which I think is pretty cool. We did all, my grandma and I did all sorts of crafting together. She taught me how to etch glass when I was just a wee thing. She's like, <laughs> she told me I had to be really careful and I didn't realize when I got older that it's a good thing I was really careful. <laughs> so that stuff is, can be toxic and dangerous, but grandma was probably keeping a pretty close eye on me. It made it with uh, cats on it. So big surprise there. It had two kitties on either side of the mirror with something in the center. I don't remember what. So, but my grandma and I had a lot of fun together when I was little. We still do, but in different ways. We did some, uh, we made pillows together and that was fun. We made uh, throw blankets together. That was also fun. My grandma uh, used to sew crazy quilts. So you can look those up on Google. They are rad. And she used to give uh, all of us grandkids one when we graduated from high school. I still have mine. So. Gotta love a crazy quilt. I have my lap blankets and throw blankets too from her. She helped me make a Hello Kitty lap, lap blanket too. So I'm a little obsessed with Hello Kitty or a lot depending on your point of view. I'll have to take pictures of my Hello Kitty plushie collection. Oh goodness. So you can see I have a great big canister of 100% natural 
I don't know if that means the stuff is organic. Usually I use organic catnip, but 2.5 ounces. I would like to buy like a pound of this stuff and just have it so I can make tons and tons of cat toys. You can see I'm going to open this up a little. Just grab a pinch, put it in there. Grab another pinch, put it in there. Now these won't be like super poofy, but they'll have a good amount of catnip in them. Enough that it'll drive cats bananas if they react to catnip. Ah. You may notice my cat's getting up in my face now, P potentially. They love catnip. I don't know if they're going to notice that I'm playing with it or not. They might all be sleeping, so. Which would be fine. Yep, they're all seniors now. Let's see if I can't do this a little bit. Yep, they're all seniors. I think my youngest one is 11 and Piggy is 18. So I should probably put that in their descriptions and Moobot, their ages. And then Alice and Meow are in between. I think Alice is 14 or 15 now. And then. Oh, that's Angel. That's my youngest senior kitty. She wants treats. I shouldn't say that too loud. But, um, yeah. She's a treataholic. She's very food motivated. <laughs> Hi, baby. Hi. She's a good girl. She's a really good girl. They all are. Totally biased. Oh, I know what she wants. She wants catnip. Hey, Cupie. Yeah? <laughs> really? Oh, oh, shoot. <laughs> Ah, she jumped up on my computer. Oh, I'll have to rethread this needle now. She made me laugh. Wow, she really wants catnip. <laughs> oh, kitties, man. I'll have to give them some cat dampen in just a second. I got fur on my... I think you guys can still hear me okay. <laughs> oh, cats. So as you can see, we've gone all the way around with the blanket stitch. This is blanket stitch. This is nice and kind of poofy with catnip in it. We have two stitches left to do. So one in the middle right here. Pull that through. We had just enough, just enough of this thread. I was going to call it string, it's thread. I can take that off, put it in there. So, as you can see, we left the tail from the other side when we first started. And that's just so we can tie it off good and strong. And we're going to do another surgeon's knot. To make sure it's pretty flush with the toy so cats don't get their teeth caught in it. Or rats. Oh. Just a second. I'm going to just do this close to me. I'm having a hard time getting this away from my body. This thread is awfully thin, so 
It's making it hard for me to manipulate away. Let's see there. Now it's all knotted. And then we'll just cut these tails off. Now I don't know if you noticed, but these are very similar to my other pair of scissors. But these have fabric written on them. No. Pink fabric. So I keep my scissors separate. But see, here's a kitty comet all finished. Do, do, do. So I think that's going to be it for tonight that I'm going to be doing on stream. I'll throw up some pictures of other kitty comets on Instagram. And as per usual, if you have any questions about anything you saw today, you can just shoot me an email at xenajcreates at gmail.com and I'll try to get back to you. Um, I hope you guys have a great weekend and a great night, and I'll see you next Monday. All right, bye for now.